As much as we all love the alternate world of Ultimates, we also sometimes just love to hate it too. Why? Well, there's a pretty long list of reasons. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. I cannot deny that Ultimates brought us a lot of interesting and unique takes on characters that still inspire the direction they move towards today, both up on the big screen and in the comics. But there are also a lot of events that happen that hopefully won't inspire anything ever. Today we are here to talk about that as we count down the top 10 worst things in the Ultimate Marvel Universe Part 2. And if you like reminiscing about some of the bad times, be sure to check out Part 1 to this list as well. Or if you want to reflect on some of the good times from alternates, we also got you covered with the best of list. Like I said, it wasn't all bad, but for now, let's get counting. Number 10. Double Death Peter I don't actually have any issues with Spider-Man dying. I don't wish Peter Parker ill. I just feel like death is such a finite ending that sometimes it can be nice to have that in stories so that sometimes we can just move forward as opposed to getting stuck on repeat, stuck in a loop. What I take issue with though when it comes to Peter's deaths in Ultimates, cause yeah, I feel like he definitely got more than one, was that he was killed off kind of suddenly or unceremoniously, which meant he had to be brought back again to do it right. And then after all that, we also find out that he's pretty much immortal. Granted, this does also help to make his multiple deaths make sense and give us a nice, neat little ending for Peter as he passes the torch to Miles. But still, that first death, woo, it was a doozy. During Ultimatum, it seems as though Spider-Man, after being forced to fight his nightmares, gets caught up in the midst of a huge explosion initiated by an equally frustrated Hulk. Of course, overall, he appears to survive, but it seems that the intention here originally was to kill him and that this death was simply retconned away. Also, I don't know if it's just me, but like, I really don't like the argument between Kitty and MJ at the beginning. They're like, I love him. Well, I love him too. Oh my goodness. Be quiet. I'm all about love, but that's, that's so, I don't know. Just something about it just grates me. <laughs> don't like it. You couldn't possibly understand how I feel because I love him. No, well, I love him. So you couldn't possibly understand how I feel. Ugh. Number nine, Magneto kills Professor X. While this might not seem like such a strange and unsettling thing, keep in mind that Magneto and Charles are often presented in the comic book world as being opponents, but still being friends. While this might not seem like such a strange and unsettling thing, keep in mind that Magneto and Charles are often presented in the comic book world as being opponents, but still being friends. And here, for a long while, they were actually allies on Earth. 1610. History aside though, this death is a brutal one, mostly because of how easy Magneto makes it seem. Magneto kills Charles by simply breaking his neck. He just snaps it. He doesn't even go all magnetism on him, though he does do that at other times in the Ultimate Universe. I don't know what exactly Charles did to deserve his life in this reality. I mean, it's not like he ignored the growing sentience of a training room who also happened to be a mutant when he claimed to be fighting for all mutant rights, right? Oh wait. Well, you know, at least he never lied to the X-Men about it. Oh wait. Number eight, too sexy? Question mark? Is there such a thing? When it comes to the X-Men in this reality, yes, there might just be something as too sexy. And I'm all for sexy. Here, the X-Men were notorious for being overly sexualized. There are a lot of overt sexual moments that happen with our mutants who seem to be weirdly horny a lot of the time. Look, I'm not saying that heroes and villains can't be sexy or that they can't be sexual. This is comics after all. Sexiness is a big part of the industry and the allure and the history. But even for comics, this feels like a bit much. This also extended beyond X-Men and other characters with Natasha and Tony's special tape and Carol and Tony's love-hate relationship that helped them work through some mutual frustration with each other professionally. Hmm. When it comes to X-Men, we also learned that Wolverine slept with Magneto's wife, Magda, which made people question who Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch's father really was. To add on to that, Wolverine then saw Wanda and Pietro together getting intimate, which is really weird, but it's especially really weird if Wolverine seems to be their dad, maybe, or if that's even like a question. Ah! Bottom line, I think the thing that most frustrates me about the, the sexiness in Ultimates is that it feels like it did a lot of this just for the shock factor. Like it wasn't even about like sexiness for story or like sexiness for sexiness. It was like sexiness so that people would be like, oh, gasp, what am I reading? Number seven, Giant Man Eats the Blob. 
Everybody is eating everybody in Ultimates. I don't know what it is with this world and cannibalism. I guess to be like really edgy, that is one of the final ingredients that you need. I don't know. And you gotta have it in spades, I guess. On part one, we talked about how Blob was caught devouring the wasp and in revenge for the Blob's actions, Hank decided to give him a taste of his own medicine when he found him. As Giant Man, Hank pays the Blob back in kind by killing him through, you guessed it, eating him, biting off his head, clean off. Ugh, or well, it doesn't look too clean, but you know what I mean. The other awful thing about this gruesome death is that it doesn't really give us even enough time to, to process the awfulness that was Janet being eaten just like a few moments ago. The story just rushes us through to the next like excessively violent and vengeful moment. And friends, if you occasionally love to hate things, and uh, I know you do. This is this is fandoms. This is what we do sometimes. We lovingly hate things. Be sure to show that love to hate by giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much if you've already done it. It really does help us out, so thank you. Number six, death of Cyclops. Quicksilver ends up assassinating Cyclops because he wants to carry on in his father's footsteps. No, Quicksilver, no! Did you not just see what happened during Ultimatum? It, it wasn't good. We do not need more hardcore Magneto. It was a mess. The other thing that was really weird about this death is that it didn't really lead to anything for Quicksilver. He said he wanted to follow in his father's footsteps, continue his dad's work, create a new brotherhood, but nothing big really ever comes of this. Like, I mean, he creates a new brotherhood, but it's just like a lot of running around without much going on. There's no, there's no through line here for this narrative. Number five, Mr. Sinister. Like, I know Mr. Sinister is kind of a crazy dude, but I feel like we made him crazy in a less interesting way here in Ultimates, if that makes sense. Instead of being obsessed with evolution and teaming up with Apocalypse in order to improve himself, adopting the name Sinister because it's what his wife called him, Nathaniel Essex was instead someone who worked at Oscorp working on a potential new super soldier serum. Because in Ultimates, everything comes back to super soldiers. Now, I personally feel that Mr. Sinister is lesser than in comparison to his 616 counterpart, who is both fabulous, wicked, ruthless, and strangely sane for someone who is so deranged. He's both sane and insane at the same time. I, I don't know how he does it. But what really irks me is how downplayed and modernized Sinister's look is here in Ultimates. I have three words. Needs more capes. Number four, Ultron loves Wanda? One of the weirdest things to happen in Ultimates was when it was actually just a straight up thing that Ultron loved Wanda. Some people have theorized even in the MCU that Vision only loves Wanda because Ultron did. But me, personally, I like to try and distance myself as far as possible from this really weird and strange plot when it comes to theories. I'm not saying that robots don't deserve love. They do deserve love. But in Ultron's case, maybe, maybe they don't. I don't know. Ultron saw Pietro was a major competitor for Wanda's affections. For more on that, see part one of this list. And when Ultron realized he couldn't have her, he decided no one would, killing her instead. He killed her because he loved her. This excuse in my mind never makes for a great love story or plot, by the way. Don't kill people because you love them. W what is that? What is that? Number three, World War X. I mean, this as an idea on paper seems pretty cool, but where it falls apart is, well, pretty much at the beginning. The whole issue is that the reason for these two groups wanting to actually go to war just doesn't really feel, I don't know, justified. Basically what goes down here is you have Kitty Pride ruling over Utopia and Jean Grey ruling over Xi'an or Tian. Not sure if I'm saying that right, but I promise I'm trying. It isn't even really explained how Jean Grey came to be the one in power. She was just appointed to take over by the surviving Zorn brother who died somehow, I think? I don't know what happened there. Jean wants Utopia and Xi'an to become one mutant nation, but Kitty isn't interested in joining. Jean says she doesn't want a war, but insists that Kitty started it, so now there has to be one? Even though she doesn't want one? All because Kitty killed some androids left to her by the Zorn brothers. Yeah. And from there, it just gets more ridiculous and weird. I like the idea of a mutant versus mutant faction fight, but this was a weird one. I think you gotta really make it, you gotta make it justified, like with Cyclops versus Wolverine, when they kind of had like two different like ideologies on how to approach leadership. And then it was like, which team are you? 
That makes sense to me. Number two, extreme domestic dispute. Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne have always had a troubled marriage in the comics. Ever since that faithful panel where Hank dramatically and intentionally struck Janet, Hank has been thought of as a troubled man who is more inclined to hurt the ones he loves and thus drives them away. This panel was intended by editor Jim Shooter to actually be redrawn as he felt the moment should actually be an accident, not something intentional. However, they ran out of time to redo it and to this day, this action has haunted the character of Hank Pym. So much so that on Earth 1610, it was simply imagined of like how much worse he could possibly be to poor Janet. They were like, how worse can this get? Here she tries to stand by Hank even after their relationship gets really rough. It gets really bad when she and Hank end up in a fight with one another with Janet using her powers against him. While she is shrunk down, Hank then sends his army of ants after her, almost killing Janet as she goes into anaphylactic shock from all the ant stings and bites. It's just terrible. Number one, blood and gore. Another issue that people had with the Ultimate Universe, just all the blood and gore that we saw here. And more specifically, all the needless blood and gore. The Ultimate Universe took violence to a new level. And while I'm actually a fan of a gory scene when it holds meaning, many felt that much of what we saw was gratuitous. It was there for the shock factor. Like some of the Marvel Max series that we got, it was more about shocking readers than using the violence or gore to say something really important. There are examples of this littered throughout Ultimates from Natasha's brutal death at the hands of Hawkeye, not that she didn't deserve it, who pinned her to the wall with arrows, to heads exploding, decapitation, and of course, just lots of cannibalism. Nothing was too gruesome, it seemed, for the Earth of 1610. What is your favorite worst ultimate moment? What is your favorite best ultimate moment? Which alternate universe do you wish got highlighted more in comics today? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd, and I am your host, Amanda McKnight, reminding you, as always, to stay nerdy, YouTube.